a heartfelt welcome everyone and uh, today we have with us jaya narayan she is a melbourne uh, based somatically inspired expressive art therapist and with her we will be discussing about our upcoming two day um, deep immersion expressive art uh, therapy program on uh, november 26th and december 3rd uh, so this program is open only for a few people of uh, only for eight people and we will be conducting like conducted conducting this as a very small um, <laughs> group offering uh, so again jaya ji a very very heartfelt welcome to you thank you uh, so much and yeah we have minakshi joining in hi minakshi <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> yeah so uh, uh, let's start with uh, your introduction uh, could you please like introduce yourself and share your journey yeah. into somatics and expressive art therapy and how did you uh, become involved in this line of work and what's your story yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love to. And just want to say that this is my first ever live, so I'm a bit like nervous about how it goes, but hopefully I can find my feet. <laughs> uh so I uh I began uh, my experience uh in my own personal work uh and I tried different modalities uh, to work through my own stuff and I found that the experiential modalities which are um a few of them which i practice like the expressive arts uh, the body as well as psychodrama where modalities that i felt like i could really uh learn more about myself and so when i experienced that as a client i was very curious to know more and i started to train in these modalities Uh, back in india and at that time in india it was just about starting mm-hmm. the whole focus away from talk therapy and uh, you know traditional counseling uh, and so that's how i started and in the beginning uh, i used to run a practice in bangalore where i used mm-hmm. to offer um, individual and groups uh, you know long time ago before i moved to melbourne and i then continued to do my training uh in psychodrama and the creative arts and uh, you know and continue to practice uh so at this moment in time i uh, have a private practice uh, i also am a creative therapist in a in a school for refugee and asylum seeker uh, humans who identify as female and also and am an educator in the masters program uh so lots of different sort of roles that i play at this moment uh in time yeah wow um that's quite inspiring and uh, i really like how you use a blend of like you know different modalities and sometimes when we think about uh, you know uh, expressive art like we usually connect it with art like yes. colors but there yes. is a you know a whole spectrum yes. that you offer yes uh, yes so in this program uh, like we talk a lot about you know creativity like befriending yeah. our creativity yeah. so usually uh, i was watching one of your video where you were talking about that you know usually we have a very um, limited understanding of creativity yes and we often you know compartmentalize ourselves as being creative and not so creative uh, yes Yeah so can you help us to unpack this word creativity and what does it like actually entail yeah. yeah i feel like the word creativity somehow has got attached to the word being artistic and so those people who are artistic visually mostly are uh, consider themselves as creative whereas there is a whole lot of uh, other creative possibilities that we all engage in you know from the from the ways in which we dress ourselves mm-hmm. to you know what how we mm-hmm. put ourselves together to how we set up our spaces to uh, you know things we do for example writing or you know for someone like you for example shalu you you just found creativity in offerings and creating this beautiful mm-hmm. space uh, you know and so the, all mm-hmm. of those are mm-hmm. parts of uh, you know being creative which is i think for me a, a way to connect with our imagination and really allowing ourselves the freedom to be as we are 
mm-hmm. and 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 that it becomes you know creative and it doesn't have to be you know good looking or looking in a particular mm-hmm. way or being in particular ways um to then say oh yeah only then uh, you know if i have a product something mm-hmm. i can you know put on display is then only then do i become and you know lots of people cook every day and you know their creativity is just doing the simple dal rice every day in a yeah. beautiful way and i think that is creative isn't it like to mm-hmm. overcome that boredom yeah. and to fi- to create something every single day i think that's quite amazing and i find like all of those as ways in which we can bring our creativity to the world yeah wow yeah so this means that all of us are creative that means you know yes absolutely and uh, you know our grandmothers are creative because they yeah. just found ways to you know make do with the least amount of things you know our moms mm-hmm. and dads have been creative because they've managed you know so many adversities in you know very simple ways you know and all of those i feel like is uh, you know our unique ways of being creative yeah wow wow this makes us feel like it's a <laughs> achievable aspect yeah. of sin every everyone everyone every one of us is is part of that umbrella mm-hmm. for sure yeah wow wow okay so this takes me to my um next uh question of discussion so yes. can you guide us through this uh two day uh, workshop yep. on expressive yep. art like what does the yes uh, itinerary look like for these two days and what is it that we are yeah. uh, actually going to like experience or get yeah. out of the book yeah yeah great uh, so essentially when we think about uh, the way ways of this workshop uh, the main focus uh, for me as 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 a person who runs these kind of programs is to bring integration mm. between our thoughts our emotions our body and you know and how do we bring all of those together with our imagination so the the main thing that we are trying to do is to really find that connection mm-hmm. you know and and that that is the focus mm-hmm. and in this particular workshop we are looking at a couple of things one is uh, self discovery and self discovery in ways that uh, perhaps are much more grounded in the experiential mm-hmm. so i am not expecting to run power powerpoint slides or mm-hmm. share about my experience but we all learn through a process that i can offer and we explore them together either, either through making something or mo- moving our bodies or sensing uh, our, ourselves and the world or the the environment around us or using you know imagination through mm-hmm. visualization so just really trying to access these many different faculties that we have and each 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 day the focus is going to be uh, a couple of words that i wrote down was self discovery mm-hmm. uh, curiosity and integration so allowing a range of prompts so people can discover not only visual visual ways of being created but also like a uh, different ways because even in our bodies we mm-hmm. have so many impulses mm-hmm. and ways of being that you know makes us connect to ourselves and each other so mm-hmm. to bring all of that uh, to the fore through through an experiential process uh, so the focus would be on uh, staying in the here and now mm-hmm. staying in this experience and then uh working through that to pay attention to what just happened mm. what was the process like what did i discover through the process what choices did i make and from there we connect to mm. me like what about me am i learning through this process mm. does that does that help yes to yes. offer an overview not, yeah not, yeah i remember attending your last last to last year uh, yeah. expressive art program yes. and uh and how that helped me a lot uh, in terms of you know connecting or overcoming like there were a lot of barriers that i couldn't see yeah. uh that were uh, somewhere stopping me uh, from becoming this yeah. uh, authentic you know to connecting yeah. with my authenticity and yeah. i discovered there like you know a lot of uh, ways to connect with myself yeah. and uh, and the way i appear in the world and yes. that was very very powerful uh, experience yeah. for me and yeah. yeah yeah 
Yeah. I think uh, what, what I can uh, then say from what you're sharing is that it's really about finding a unique voice, mm -hmm. you know, in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and, and this workshop's called Ordinary to Extraordinary. So in some ways, we're all ordinary. Mm -hmm. And in mm -hmm. some ways, we are all extraordinary because wow. we're all quite unique in our own, you know, in our, in, even in the structures of our body, right? The way we hold our body, mm -hmm. the way we hold our muscles. So just to discover the uniqueness that you know we bring into the world mm. right and and if from that place we can really feel quite alive mm. you know it can be quite motivating because then it's not about someone else or mm. you know comparisons it's really about like oh can i access more of that voice of mine which is my own yeah so i'm hoping that at least to initiate that process it's a two day workshop so we we're just going to sort of knock on those doors yeah. and open up you know a few possibilities and hopefully you know uh, participants can continue to do some of that work yeah. uh, further yeah. yeah so yeah we'll discover aspects of ourselves that we know were there we never yeah. know that yes. they were there like i discovered yeah. a lot of parts of me which i yeah. felt that you know i used to feel that i was very uh, in terms like very shy in certain yeah. aspects but then later i realized like you know how yeah. those were like uh, my sort of my strength uh, so yes yeah yes yes and then we also learn from each other isn't it like sometimes and this is the reason we run a group because and we run a small group because one of the things is i quite believe that the participants that come together uh, are important for each other mm -hmm. you know and there's there's a reason why a certain number number of people or particular types of people came together mm -hmm. because they can offer us a mirror to mm -hmm. certain things that we can see in ourselves and things that we can't see in ourselves mm -hmm. and this and the reverse is true as well and so that mm -hmm. process of um, sharing and connecting uh, also opens up some more doors uh, rather than it being just an individual process <clears throat> yeah wow yeah okay uh, so i'm very excited <laughs> for the <laughs> yeah um, it's great yeah so uh, so some of us like some people uh, have doubts yeah. you know about yeah. uh, like doing it online uh, so yeah. if yeah. we can um, you know talk yeah. about it a little bit like what is your uh, take on doing this kind of uh, yeah therapeutic workshop online will it be as yeah. effective as doing yeah. such offerings offline yeah i think uh, you know thanks to zoom now we've been able to really find that uh, you know in, in you know virtual spaces are as effective as mm. you know uh, one on one spaces and i think it depends on the skill of the facilitator and i work in both spaces so um you know and this is why if you notice in our brochure we've like created a few norms that you have to you know be willing to engage through your video we don't want participants to switch off their video you know and then just be listening because that means that we are really not engaging fully so there are certain requirements that we have for those who are are interested in being in this workshop so that everyone feels safe and everyone feels like uh, my uh, sharing or what i'm offering here is is you know being witnessed by everyone so i think some of those norms make the process uh, you know very meaningful in the online space um, the other thing i feel like is really important is uh, privacy uh, so when we are in uh, in uh, you know when we are setting up ourselves and if you are joining the workshop to make sure that you are in a space that is private you know the doors are closed like you see my door behind i'm wearing headphones so only i can hear uh, what everyone else is saying and those again add to uh, privacy and safety and i feel like that's really really important uh, and because our work is experiential uh, you know everyone will be experiencing something so it's not that we are going to stay in our thoughts and therefore we can be distracted we will be staying in our process um so those ways make it uh, you know quite mm. shareable mm. and uh, you know there's there's a certain quality of connection mm. that can happen mm. but uh, for me i feel like it's really important that and this is why i think we always work with a small group isn't it chalo that we we always very particular about who's mm. joining and what intentions they're coming in with because 
you can't be a fly on the wall in this kind of a workshop you really have to dig in yeah. if you want to you know and everyone digging in you know that that workshop is really sacred it's very yeah. special um and anyone who's just like a passer by <laughs> will not work for this kind of work so yeah so i think that's why we have set up some of those norms to you know really make sure that the one people who are joining us are really interested and willing to commit yeah. into this kind of a process yeah yeah, yeah. interesting uh okay uh so this takes me to my uh, next or the last question like yeah all although you have already covered it like who all can yeah. you know uh, yeah. join this yeah. workshop uh, yeah. do individuals need to be at a specific stage in their life or in their healing journey to be a part of this or anybody can you know join yeah yeah i think anyone can join mm -hmm. anyone who is curious anyone who wants to explore uh, modalities in mm -hmm. um you know in the mental health space it's not in the healing space because i mm -hmm. feel like that is a very different mm -hmm. world this is uh, the work that i offer is very much grounded in the mental health emotional mm -hmm. wellbeing space mm -hmm. um who are needing to find out more about mm -hmm. themselves and the the cre and and uh, be, even though it, it says creative expressive arts mm -hmm. we are not needing anyone to be an artist mm -hmm. uh, in fact uh, that is absolutely not a prerequisite for anyone joining or they don't have to have a practice at all in a creative mm -hmm. you know even in traditional creative ways um because the process uh you know will allow for the discoveries mm -hmm. to happen so really open to anyone um who feels connected to these words you you can also have you know have a look at the brochure and you know um and you know uh, maybe talk to you uh, shalu and minakshi who attended these previous workshops and i know there are a few others who attended mm -hmm. these workshops just to find out what your experience has been mm -hmm. but really open to anyone um who is interested in supporting their own mental health mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay uh, so uh, this brings us to the end of our life and uh, yes thank you so much reyadi for joining us oh, th and thank you so much for hosting me <laughs> <laughs> this, and, and thank uh, you very everyone. special yeah. yes thank you so much everyone for your patience and yeah i really appreciate it yeah, yeah. and i wish to see some of you on this journey and if you wish to know more more details about this offering kindly uh, go to the registration and brochure link in our bio and you can also get directly go to our website to know more details about the program or you can directly get in touch with me and so yeah take care everyone thank you so much jaya ji uh, thank you so much take care see i'll see you soon see you. bye bye